The next speaker is Carlo D'Alessio, and he is the man behind that weird violet something machine behind you. Um, and he will talk to us about fragmented nutrition. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, NetSots, for uh, having us here. Um, my intervention represents the work of a team, of course. Um, we are going to deep dive into uh, smaller stuff. So from above the clouds and the overall visions of uh, David's and uh, Mr. Lightman, we are going to look at uh, a tool uh, to be used from um, single persons for, um, uh, for communities in order to uh, answer to the question, how can uh, single people in, in a networked society work and, and um, uh, produce useful information and produce um, for themselves and from their community? So uh, most of the people so, um, say today, oh, what a beautiful landscape. Okay, so if you look at, I mean, just from the uh, tourist's point of view, uh, yes, it is beautiful. If you look at it from the food chain point of view, it's a mess. So everything, the source of food is outside the cities. Tiny roads, you can even see, the, see them, actually. So fragmented logistics invading the city, packaging, uh, pollution, and trucks driving. On the other hand, if you look at it from the uh, energy harvesting point of view, like Mr. Leitzman's um, intervention, what I see is a desert, actually. From the energy harvesting, what I see is a desert. From the food chain perspective, what I see is a mess. So, uh, where's the... Um... Let's go deep. So, uh, this is one among many to be honest, this is ours, but this is one among many phytodrones. What, what's a phytodrone, okay? So uh, a phytodrone is um, more than a grow box, and a phytodrone is made from other stuff you don't see here in the physical object. So in this picture here, or, or in the sample we, we brought to you today. Because this is made of... Um, Chips, stuff, aluminium, drivers, LEDs, etc., and information. So basically, it is a machine, um, let's say an almost intelligent machine, who is able to control all the vital parameters for growing your plants, whether they be medical, whether they be uh, for food, whether they are used for genetics or bacteria research and academic, uh, academical programs and research. So uh, what the machine does is uh, executing um, a program which replicates an environment. So this environment is made of humidity, temperature, irrigation cycles, um, and of course lighting cycles, and we will see then um, what does it mean um, later on. So, um, Phytodon is a is a technology, so it's a tool. It's a tool for the single in uh, and for uh, the community as well. So um, today is um, mostly a acceptable sunny day, but just please about uh, please think about um, the geography of the world. So uh, we are pretty lucky in Italy, but there are a lot of. Um, um, uh, areas with a very limited solar power um, uh, patterns around the world. So this is uh, what we call um, a geographical barrier. Um, also, uh, information is a barrier because how do you um, use technology in order to empower people? Uh, I mean, one of our ideas is that uh, maybe one day uh, the average Joe will not be sit on a couch being scared by TV, but the, but the average Joe will be a much more evoluted person. So at least uh, that, that's something we, uh, we, we, we hope so. Uh, and then we had, up until today, uh, because in, in the last year, 
we have, and maybe you saw them online, uh, a rise of uh, various producer, producers who are into phytodrones. We had this um, technological barrier, which was uh, represented by lighting technologies, because uh, before the LED and before the w w what we call solid state lighting, which is commonly known as uh, LEDs and lasers and other stuff. Uh, basically, lighting was uh, developed and implemented for the for us, for the human eye, for us to be uh, able to see. Um, the recent uh, exploits of LED technologies um, actually made possible tailored application for other photoreceptors because we are not alone in this planet, uh, such as plants, for example. So, um, even though I'm personally, personally a lighting specialist, so I, I have no doubt that the um, humans will never be able to replicate the sun spectrum, okay? Um, this is something which is given and something really tricky to be reproduced. Uh, what we had uh, up until now was the sun and the artificial light, light sources. So this is, an, this is an example of emission of conventional light sources. And then over the years, other technologies came, came, came in. So these are um, fixed spectra. The problem is this is the sun, which gives us almost everything we need, okay? And these are the absorption, pa absorption patterns, sorry, of the uh, photosynthetic um, activities of a plant. What is possible now is to, um, with phytodrones and with LED technology and with proper coding, reproduce the very um, important part of the solar spectrum which um, plants use for photosynthesis. Just to um, give you an example, uh, we, don't, we do not have um, a green peak here. Basically, the leaf you so before it is green because it's reflecting to your eyes, the green radiations, okay? Um, also the LEDs technologies um, uh, meant that uh, less heat is generated into the, um, the growing chamber. So the growing chamber basically can be smaller. You can have it in your home. You can do uh, a single module for yourself, but then you can figure out a technology on how to scale it for communities and for research. Uh, and this here, this area here, is that funky, let's say, um, light you see there. That pinkish light is actually the addition of this spectra, which is, um, let's say, what the plant needs to properly grow. Uh, this is going too deep, actually, so, we had technology, period, okay? So technology is for the technologist. So we have another barrier. So we, we, are, um, we, um, we destroy the geographical barrier. So nighttime, no problems. Harsh environments outside, desert, cities, underground, um, metros. It's gone, okay? We have the technology. Um, we destroy the um, uh, geographical barrier. We have the technology, we destroy the um, technology barrier. The last uh, important thing, probably the most important one is knowledge, okay? So one of the other pillars that David talked about before. Um, this, this is a machine, okay? I'm gonna uh, show you. And we saw before um, that is a parametric machine. So it does have an interface and it does have parameters which you can set. So uh, you basically have your garden and your plants and for each phase of the um, plant's life cycle, okay, you, you can set temperature, humidity, pH, EC, lighting setting, settings, night times, day times. Well, that might seem complicated and tricky, um, but basically we developed um, an interface to uh, let 
the majority of people easily configure this stuff. But if you have parameters, you have control, and then you have also a language, because uh, at the end of the game, you can um, save your uh, growing program, if you are happy with it, with your cultivation, in order to repeat it, or you can share it with other users who owns the same machine. So if you, have an, if you are a user who have the, um, let's say, the, the will and the knowledge to set up such a machine, you are free to configure it by yourself and to test and fine tune your performance. And you contribute to raise the bar to the machine performance. So it's the human who is raising the bar of the machine performance, which is different from the opposite. On the other hand, if you are a user who has basically the uh, will, but not the knowledge to operate such a machine, you can uh, rely on the crowdsourced information. You just download a file um, from the community um, who is sweet for your species. Uh, and this is how we um, believe uh, is a sustainable scheme for imagining technology. So again, this is about fragmented nutrition and empowering also the average Joe. So um, by technology and also by, um, by knowledge. Uh, on another scale, uh, this is um, uh, that's a, a cast up everything. Everything I'm, I'm talking about, all the project is open source, by the way. And online we have the um, repository with the source files, so everything is open, hardware and software. Period. Uh, I forgot this very important um, important aspect. So uh, on the on another hand, we scaled up this uh, technology platform for academic research, and this is um. A custom order we carried out uh, by request of the uh, um, National Museum, um, Italian National Museum of Science and Te Technology, Leonardo da Vinci in Milan. Uh, we just made um, uh, Meg's big brother, so it's, um, it's actually 2.5 meter in height and has this control panel here, which is just the replica of what you will find on your mobile device, tablet or smartphone, uh, for using the, uh, the small mag. And they're using it in their genetics, uh, genetics laboratory because they basically store data. And when they um, have to repeat of giving of, uh, uh, or, uh, or to give parameters to one of their process, then they go back and reanalyze that. So they have a platform of data information. They're also using it for um, formation, for example, and for further exp extending, um, extending knowledge. Um, actually, a uh, couple of catchy slides, let's say, for uh, what is about to come? Of course, this is um, uh, that's provocative. So um, this is about, as you, as many uh, of you know, integrating uh, the um, um, let's say contained environment, so micro environment for having sustainable spaceship or uh, extra um, uh, or space col col colonization in which. Uh, as NASA uh, stated like, six or eight months ago, actually they found that it's something also useful for the emotions of the cosmonauts and the astronauts. So cultivating something which is living with you in this kind of harsh environment is something that is useful also for your psychology, actually. Um, oh, Pierre, of course. You want me? No. And uh, again, another picture of, um, of an hypothesis of uh, uh, extraterrestrial systems uh, replicating, uh, a, replicating a microclimate is another of the keys so, of, of this kind of system. So basically, you can do it on Earth, like, for example, Starting and replicating an African an African climate climate and putting it into a chamber uh, in the U.S., for example, 
So you can do it uh, geographically, but we would like to think that in order to uh, progress to the future, you have to look back at the past. So um, we had input from researchers. Actually, we are working also with, um, with Italian universities. So along with the museum, we are working for the, let's say, uh, agronomy um, faculty of Milan, which is one of the most pro prominent in Italy. Uh, one of the ideas was how it, is that a way to replicate environment conditions which are gone? So microclimates which are no longer here in order to um, making possible some research which was um, uh, not possible a um, few years ago. Um, thank you. I'm done. If you have any questions. So questions? Come on, you've seen the dinosaurs. Oh, there is one there. Hi. Uh, as you say that we are in Italy and we have uh, the sun normally. <laughs> so why um, a Casalinga di, uh, di Voghera should buy a block uh, for phytoplants? Uh, are there uh, normal use cases for it? Thank you. Uh, let's say the, that we are uh, talking about existing machines that nowadays may be used for, let's say, high valuable crops, which nowadays could not be the case of a tomato or a basil, okay? But one day may be. So today we do have um, plants that have sense to be grown there, okay? One day, this, the, um, the things may change. Uh, again, this is not just about the uh, machine. This is about the empowering process of the user. Okay, um, this is one way in which we can actually um, elevate, maybe in some aspects, the Casalinga di Voghera, because I do not believe that you can start an entire. Um, uh, implant on politics starting from uh, the Casalinga di Voghera, to be honest, uh, because it's, it's a weak starting point. So maybe the uh, one of the aim of Nectar Society may be also the one to start from people in order to elevate them. So starting from the people themselves. Um, going back to your question, uh, I hope you uh, I hope I answered uh, you you got the message. So maybe one day tomato would be valuable. Also, for, to, to give you an, a, a practical example, I will talk about um, uh, legal drug plants in the US, for example, which are worth, worth the, the cost and the operation of the machine nowadays. Uh, or collector's plants, or rare plants for high-end restorations. So something which is worth the uh, cost and the hassle. For today. Tomorrow, maybe, um, ma maybe more common, uh, more commodities would be, let's say, uh, worth the worth the SO. And of course, the technology curve of this kind of machines um, will be, um, we will enable people to have less expensive machine uh, and augmented user experiences. I mean, to to have it, to have them to be operated uh, as easily as possible. Thank you. Uh, we will try to answer all the questions. So I ask you to keep the questions short and the answers as well. Okay. Uh, as you know, environment is not only light. Environment is made of gas, soil, and soil nutrition. How you deal with the things? Um, we have two versions. Even though lighting is accountable for 55% of the um, development of a plant in such an environment, comma, uh, the other stuff is um, or um, is monitored, and uh, you can operate on this. For example, the first slide I, I showed you is um, the open source version, which we have online. Uh, is based on soil cultivation, and you have a, a central irrigation system with um, with a pump, 
which is centralized uh, in the brain of the machine, and you can set up the frequency of, uh, of the uh, distribution of the irrigation. And we have an upgrade which allows you uh, on an NPK scheme of nutrition also to dilute into the water the NPK nutrients. Okay, So you can uh, regulate the time, the intensity, and the nutrient distribution into the irrigation uh, part. Almost the same, I would say almost the same, I'm trying to uh, be concise, um, it is happening here in this machine, which is hydroponics. So it's another style, let's say, of conceiving the... Uh, so we have sensors uh, to, give, to give the machine feedback, okay? And then we have controllers to give inputs to the, um, uh, to the, uh, to the plant. And we are doing this with the um, EC monitoring and uh, pH monitoring in the uh, um, hydroponic version. And then we have a um, temperature sensor. I mean, it's an agglomerate of existing technology. Okay, It's something that raises from the uh, arising technologies. So having a chip sensor or a chip LED is almost the same. So it, it all, all, everything comes from a platform of uh, existing technologies. But maybe we can have a chat later on uh, on the machine. Um, I know there is a question over there. And it will be the last one. How much will it cost me to, to build uh, my, my own uh, machine? So um, let's say that what you are seeing here uh, is um, let's say is a less powerful uh, version. Uh, something we are thinking for, uh, let's say, consumer grade, general public, which should be around 2K. Uh, the one you will find as, as an open source on the website, it, we, it will take you uh, from 2 to 3K, but it's a very, uh, let's say, high-end uh, kind of uh, kind of machine. Online, you have everything. You have mechanics, electrical schemes, bill of material, uh, list of online retailers, and this will cost you, except for your work, um, let's say from two to three k. But the um, the um, while the consumer version, let's say, is one block, the uh, uh, in in in. I mean, to be uh, honest with the open source fabrication, the one you see on the website is scalable. So you have the shell, which is independent from the light engine, which is independent from the growing platform. So you can dilute your uh, economic effort in, in many steps. So it's not something designed for everything uh, you see, hence the raw aesthetics you saw in the first slide is off the shelf components. Easy to find, affordable, period. Um, and it's scalable uh, investment-wise, let's say. Thank you, Carlo.